This video will cover quasi-experiments with a focus on the difference in differences method. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify a quasi-experimental technique appropriate for estimating a treatment effect in a given situation, and uh, apply the difference in differences method to estimate a treatment effect and evaluate its validity. Uh, so as with other uh, quasi-experimental techniques, uh, we'll start with an example. Uh, suppose we'd like to know what is the effect of immigration on wages. Uh, there are some concerns, for example, that uh, influxes of immigrants may increase labor supply, therefore pushing down wages, including uh, of uh, non-immigrant residents. And so if we wanted to test em empirically whether this is the case, uh, you might imagine estimating a regression like the one shown here. Suppose we collect data on different regions or cities denoted by I, and we collect data on the average wage in city I, and we regress that wage on some measure of the immigration for uh, that, that locality. For example, the percent of uh, the population in that area uh, who are immigrants. Uh, you can imagine some problems with this. So the estimated beta one coefficient would represent the relationship between uh, immigration and wages. Uh, however, there are probably omitted variables here. So for example, uh, perhaps uh, regions near borders, uh, near national borders, uh, could get more immigrants, uh, but they could also have economic, uh, different economic conditions uh, for some other reason. And so we should be uh, reluctant to attribute the estimated beta one uh, coefficient to the impact of immigration on wages. Uh, so one solution comes from an observation that economist David Card made. In 1980, there was a large influx of Cuban immigrants who entered Miami, Florida in an event known as the Mariel Boatlift. Um, after the sudden influx of immigrants, there was a temporary lift in immigration restrictions, uh, and therefore there were uh, many more immigrants in the Miami, Florida area uh, shortly after that event. So uh, David Card, uh, using this observation, calculated what's called the difference in differences. Uh, in, and in doing that calculation, he was uh, looking at what happened uh, both after and before uh, this boat lift, this event which caused this influx of immigrants. Uh, but he also uh, drew a comparison between Miami and other cities. And so uh, perhaps the, the name difference in differences may sound familiar from uh, other work you've done, uh, but notice that there are also two different differences that we are talking about after versus before and Miami versus other cities. So to go into more detail on this quasi-experimental uh, quasi technique, difference in differences, uh, first note that uh, we need to be observing two different differences. Uh, so in this case, we are observing uh, some event, namely this, this boat lift, and we are observing uh, what happened both before and after that event, but we are also observing what happened in what we might think of as a treatment location, uh, in this case Miami, Florida, and a control location, and David Card uh, used data on uh, other cities uh, that may be considered comparable to Miami. Uh, so to implement the difference in differences approach, uh, we're going to estimate a regression model that looks like uh, what you see here. So just to go through uh, the pieces, y is some relevant outcome variable. So recall that we were interested in wages of a particular region or city. Uh, x is going to be a dummy variable. So it is equal to 1 if the area is uh, what we might consider the treatment. So in this case, uh, Miami, Florida is what we might think of as the treatment group. Uh, they're the, the area where this uh, boat lift uh, introduced many new immigrants. Uh, it would be x would be equal to zero if uh, the observation represented some other city. The variable d is another dummy variable, and it is going to be equal to one if it is an observation uh, which is after the event of interest. Uh, so the event of interest, uh, of course, is this um, Maria boat lift in 1980. So if we had an observation that was uh, after 1980, regardless of which city you were in, D would be equal to 1. If it was before 1980, 
uh, d would be equal to zero. Uh, so astute observers may note that uh, we essentially have both uh, an entity and a time uh, dimension to the data here. And so you might uh, prefer to think of this as a panel data set and uh, adjust the subscript appropriately to have both an I and a T subscript. Uh, we're going to abstract from that now, uh, both so we don't uh, worry about that. Um, and because difference in differences doesn't necessarily have to have a, a time uh, dimension, uh, but you could certainly rewrite this equation if desired. Uh, the final variable in this regression, final independent variable, is the interaction term. So it is simply the product of the x and the d variables. And of course, that will be another dummy variable since we have uh, two uh, dummy variables as the independent variables. Uh, so you uh, will likely recognize uh, this uh, type of regression since we have two dummy variables and an interaction uh, variable. And in fact, you've probably already seen the idea of difference in differences. Um, we will do a quick review of uh, ways to think about the estimated coefficients in this regression model, uh, but we'll also hopefully uh, come up with a, a new uh, interpretation of that difference in differences that, that may uh, help us to understand why this would be uh, a good method to estimate a causal effect. Okay, so in this uh, table, uh, we are going to consider the predicted value of the outcome, so in this case, a predicted wage, uh, for four different groups, and those four groups are going to be defined by uh, either being in Miami or being in some other city. This is either the control cities, and also uh, looking both before the boat lift happened and after the boat lift happened. Okay, so if we start with this top left cell, we are looking in some other city, not in Miami, which would mean that x is equal to zero. We're also looking before the boat lift, which means that D is equal to zero. So if I wanted to predict the outcome Y, then I'm gonna plug in zero for X, zero for D, the interaction is also zero, and so the predicted wage would just be beta zero hat. If I were to look in uh, Miami before the boat lift, you would notice that the treatment X is equal to one, but D is still equal to zero because we're before the boat lift. The interaction is again zero. And so I would be left with beta zero hat plus beta one hat because beta one hat is multiplied by X equals one. The other uh, others are multiplied by zero. Uh, we could continue on making these predictions. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, check my math here, uh, but we're just gonna keep plugging in uh, ones and zeros as appropriate and we should arrive at a series of uh, predicted wages in these four different scenarios. I notice we can also uh, uh, calculate a variety of differences. So for example, in other cities, if I wanted to know uh, what is the difference in average wages after versus before the boat lift, I would just subtract and I would get beta two hat. I could do the same thing uh, in Miami. Alternatively, I could take differences in the other direction. So I could look before the boat lift and compare Miami versus other cities. Or I could do the same thing after the boat lift. And then in this final cell on the bottom, regardless of which way I subtract, uh, I should get this value beta three hat. So you may recall from uh, when we discussed interaction variables that we called this beta three hat the difference in differences, and hopefully this table again illustrates why. Um, so just to be clear why we might care about this difference in differences, and in particular why it might help us to measure a causal impact, um, let's uh, look at a few of these differences. So uh, looking at this uh, cell here, uh, beta two hat plus beta three hat, uh, that quantity represents the difference in average wages in Miami after versus before the boat lift. Uh, it may be tempting to think about that difference and attribute that to uh, any uh, uh, impact of the, the influx of immigrants. At the same time, we might question whether there was some other economic change happening in 1980 that may have affected wages not only in Miami, but in uh, any place in the country. Uh, well, note that we also have these control cities, these other cities where we've measured a similar difference. So this beta two hat uh, represents 
the difference in average uh, wages in these other cities after versus uh, before uh, the boat lift, even though the boat lift didn't occur in those other cities. So think of beta 2 hat as measuring the, uh, the impact of other economic changes going on at that same time. Well, by measuring this difference in differences, uh, beta 3 hat, we're essentially looking in, in Miami and, and asking uh, what happened to, to wages after the boat lift in Miami, after it was before, but then we're subtracting off um, this, uh, uh, yeah, this beta 2 hat, which tells us how wages change in other cities. And so if we're willing to assume that uh, without the boat lift, uh, Miami would have had changes in wages uh, comparable to the changes we observed in other cities, then that would leave this beta 3 hat, this difference in differences, to reflect uh, just the causal impact of this influx uh, of immigrants. Uh, and so indeed, that is what David Card did. And uh, he found that difference in differences was approximately zero. So two different ways of saying that. Uh, first, he found that uh, wages, the wage change uh, after the boat lift in Miami was about the same as that wage change in other cities, um, or uh, if we believe this assumption that uh, Miami would have been quite similar to these other cities if it weren't for the boat lift, uh, then uh, Card's results suggest that uh, the influx of immigrants had virtually no impact on wages.